Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. Real people, real issues, and real estate. You're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment. And joining us by phone today, we have poet and author of the book, Have Fun, Gregory C. Buya. Welcome to the show, Gregory. Hi, Bob. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to talk just for a second about your bio. Um, after training to be able to write down your thoughts exactly as you heard them, uh, Gregory began to investigate what to write about. When he was 21, he came to prominence as an underground writer. After stepping away from writing, he spent 18 years studying spirituality, religion, and self-improvement, practiced meditation for 10 years, and traveled the world and lived at monasteries. Spending his entire adult life trying many different ways to enjoy life has led him to awareness and kindness as his favorite things to have fun with. You can follow his journey and purchase this book by visiting his website, havefunthebook.com. So tell us about Have Fun, your book. Um, it's a great, simple title. What do you hope readers get out of your book? Uh, well, first of all, I hope they have fun reading it. Yes. Because if it's not entertaining, then mm-hmm. um, what's the point? Um, second of all, what I would like them to find in it is something to have more fun when they're not reading it. Uh, I, I, if I can put a book out there that people have fun reading and find something in it to have more fun when they're not mm-hmm. reading, I feel like um, you know that's that's quite an accomplishment and. I mm-hmm. would definitely be interested in buying a book like that myself. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And you, class- you. you classify yourself as a poet, and you say that this book is poetry. What does that mean to you, and how do you interact with your audience through the book? Well, the, um, the important thing for me about being a poet is having creative license. There are a lot of people out there who spend a lot of time, um, you know, learning to be teachers they uh for example in my favorite buddhist tradition a uh, a person has to become ordained as a monk and then spend 10 years as a monk before they get the title ajahn which literally means teacher hmm. so by um being a poet i'm able to work with these materials and uh engage people about these incredibly profound and enjoyable and you know, big topics, but at the same time, not taking a shortcut around the training of being a teacher. So I don't have the responsibility that a Mm -hmm. teacher would have, um, which, you know, because I'm I'm not interested in that at this point in my life. So Mm. I'm, it's, there's a great responsibility being a poet because, you know, a person has to learn how to use these things properly in the poetic way. The great, with a great quality check being if they don't do it effectively, people won't read it. Yes. So it's, it's, there's extra responsibility, but extra freedom in it at the same time. Hmm. You're kind of an artist, basically. Yeah. I am hugely passionate about art. Mm-hmm. What are the simple fundamentals of having fun that this book is based on? Well, you know, um, like it says in my bio, the uh, the most important things for me right now are trying to be aware of what's going on mm-hmm. and trying to be kind to what's going on, be it what I'm feeling, what others are feeling. Quite often it's the relationship that I'm having between, you know, what's between me and others or what's between me and this, this thing. Mm-hmm. So that's that's really the thrust of this book is how we can all be more aware and more kind to uh, ourselves and our experience as people. Wow. That's awesome. Let our listeners in on the format of your book. Basically it's 77 pages of questions written in a narrative style. That's kind of a unique format. Why did you choose to write the book in that way? Well, a long time ago I wanted to write a book of philosophy and uh, not use any terms you know, like the terms people learn, Mm. have to go to college to learn. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and uh, it was terribly boring. And then I decided, okay, I don't want to argue with people, so let me write questions. Mm. So I did that, and what I discovered is that questions are really the most efficient way to communicate. They're 
you know, it's it's like if I were to say to you, what's a sunset like? Mm-hmm. I could spend paragraphs and pages, maybe entire books, trying to describe what a sunset's like. But the simple question, what's a sunset like? We know what a sunset's like, you know? So um, it's it's much more efficient. Hmm. Also, they're great, too, because it's like if you have a ball with a dog. Now, my dog likes to play catch mm-hmm. or play fetch, excuse me. So if I were to take this ball and walk up to the dog and say, all right, here's the ball and hold it out to them, then, okay, maybe they take it, maybe they don't. But then, so suppose she does take it, best case scenario, then what do we do? But if I take the same ball and I throw it, we both know what to do, and here's the fun to be had right away. There's, hmm. And that's what questions are like. You know, exposition is yes. great. Yes. But when we have the questions, it's like throwing a ball or, you know, putting that quarter in yes. a video game machine or setting out on a walk. Yes. It's, it's all there for us. We just have to keep going through it. Huh. I love that. Mm. Thank how, you. How did you research the material that you write about and have fun? Well, basically, for about, I would say since about 1988, excuse me, 1998 or 1999, I've been going through this world, um, trying to improve the quality of my life, Mm -hmm. and trying to enjoy talking with people. So much in the same way that a stand-up comedian would go on stage and, you know, try out jokes and note which ones work and which ones don't, as a writer and, you know, a poet and someone who's trying to get somewhere in this world in, in ways that are really important and fun, I just tried out what worked in conversation and in my life and, um, you know, noted what worked. So over the course of about 18 years, I've developed a lot of things that I know I can do in my life to enjoy it more and Mm -hmm. ways to say these things in ways that I know are um, compelling for people to listen to. Hmm. That's awesome. You're basically just studying the world every day. Yeah, pretty much. I try to, I love to understand as well as I can, what's going on within about five feet of me. Yes. But you've also gone, like, you've basically traveled the world, and you've spent time at Buddhist monasteries. So few people have done anything like that. What would you say is your greatest learning during that time? Wow. Um, I think one, one of the most important things, that uh, we were talking about before the interview is that just because a thought pops into my head doesn't mean it's true. Mm -hmm. And also that I have the ability to step back from myself and in essence, people watch myself because one of the amazing things that I discovered when I was traveling around the world, I actually just got on a plane in Logan airport and went East and then I returned west, and all I had was a backpack. It was just me going around the world. That's nuts. You didn't even know where you were going? Well, what happened was I went to go visit a Buddhist monastery in Australia, mm-hmm. and I stayed there for about a month, and then I realized that I was halfway around the world already. Mm-hmm. So I said, I can either keep going, or I can go back the way I came. So I was like, I'll keep going. Mm-hmm. So I went directly north from there, which is up into Asia, so that pretty much gave me all of Asia and Europe to travel through. So, yeah, I, um, at that point I was just out. Hmm. I would literally, uh, you know, be sitting in a hotel room going, all right, where am I going to go next? Hmm. One time I was going to Thailand and I had this plan to go to this island and I met these people on the bus and they were going to another island. So I'm like, all right, I'll just go to that island instead. Wow. That is so cool. (laughs) Like, do you ever feel fear? Like, most people wouldn't do what you just did in general, like travel to a Buddhist monastery, because I think we have fear, especially when we're alone, like yeah. just jumping on a plane and saying, I'm going to go, I'm going to travel halfway across the world into like a strange land and a strange place. Do you feel fear and how do you overcome that? Well, yeah, um, I've been on some big trips in my life and I've done 
usually what happens is I'll be sitting at the airport or the train station or whatever before this big long trip thinking what have I gotten myself into mm -hmm. and uh, I've learned by now that that means one of the you know I'm going to have an incredible adventure mm. the uh, it's the fear um, one thing is it's about it's about love it's about um I talk about it in my book unconditional love which is just um wishing well for other people yes and it's not so much about dispelling fear it's about um uh, building up this energy of I wish well for other people I would um do this thing called meta meditation which is a uh, person you know sits down to meditate and rather than watching their thoughts or their breath or whatever they just spend a, a certain amount of time projecting goodwill to the entire world wow so yeah it, it's much easier than it sounds um I'll, I'll i'll put a link up on my website and, yes um, if, if you'd like to do a guided one of those that's really awesome so oh thank you so what happened was there mm -hmm. would be t you know it was me, I had to make friends or I'd be alone. That so, is so there were awesome. a few days where I was down in the dumps and my only the only thing that I really knew that would work to get me out of that was some of this meta meditation. So mm -hmm. I'd spend a couple of days doing that for like a half an hour, an hour a day. And that was what really kept me going, kept me from being afraid and kept me excited about discovering the joy of making new friends and enjoying spending time with them. Yes. Can you do that meta meditation? I know we're getting off track, but I just did a trip to Haiti and I was with a group that was led by uh, Charlie and Gengel who lost her daughter in the earthquake. And when somebody has such severe loss, like yeah. I was trying to do this meditation that all I could do was like, you can't comfort somebody that lost their kid, in mm. my opinion. So I was like, right. all right, I'm going to do meditation that I can help feel her pain for her. Does that make sense? Sure. So um, I don't know if that that's a meta be, meditation. That, that would be just, uh, you know, compassion. Mm. And, you know, just one of, like one of the questions in my book is, do, um, do I practice? Here, let me read you the exact quote. Hmm. Uh, how much do I practice being there even just by thinking I'm there for you for people who are suffering yes yes and you know that's a wonderful thing to do because they can feel it whether they're aware that they feel it or not they can feel it and then when you're with them mm -hmm. you know they can feel it more and you can feel it more and it just it it sets the intention in that direction mm. and that's a that's a beautiful thing that you've done so yeah that's hmm. Tell me, and, you know, yep. No, no, please go ahead. I was going to ask you. I know on your website, havefunthebook.com, by the way, if anybody wants to check out your book or buy the book, but you have a soundtrack too. So, what is the yeah. soundtrack all about? Is there a meaning behind the songs that you include? Well, um, actually, yeah these these songs are some of the most wonderful songs that I've encountered in these these past fifteen or twenty years, and. Uh, the the first caveat for them is that I have I've practiced with them I I've sung along with them so I feel comfortable singing along with them for years and years and years and uh, you know, that's important because you know we have to be careful what what we sing along with because that's you know where our thoughts and everything mm, goes yep. and um, there's a song called The World's Greatest by R Kelly it's mm -hmm. from the Muhammad Ali movie mm -hmm. with Will Smith. And it was amazing because the first time I heard it, I, I, I had no idea. Like, I, I was completely confused because he talks about, you know, I'm this, I'm that. And, all, and uh, what, I, what I realized is that it's a song about the oneness of the universe, you know, that, that feeling that we're all connected, that we're all the same thing. Hmm. And, um, and it, it's called The World's Greatest. So, you know, basically the line is, if, if anybody asks you who I am, look them in the eye and say, I'm the world's greatest. I'm that star up in the sky. I'm that mountain peak up high and, mm. and all these wonderful things. Amazing. So what, 
what he's saying is you say that, not right. That's not with him. So you know, it it reminds us that we're all one. We're all the same. We're all made from the same stuff. Right. And and I know that song slipped by me because when it came out, I saw the video. The video was kind of weird, and I was just like, whatever. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I feel like if if people you know read my book and they see this song like hey what's this and they go listen to it then this this amazing beautiful piece of art that has inspired me for years and years and years you know now you can have it on your phone and uh if i can show people things like that and direct them and help them be more inspired and especially have a feeling of oneness with the universe just by listening to a song then you know that's an amazing thing right that's awesome. So all these songs are, you know, that to varying a lesser, to greater or lesser degree. Right. That's awesome. All right. We only have 30 seconds left. So in 30 seconds, why should somebody read your book with all the different books and movies out there? What's different about Have Fun the Book? Well, as you know, you can see things and hear things mm-hmm. that are outside of you, or you can close your eyes and you can see things and hear things in your head. And I guarantee that if you read my book and you, like, really give it a chance and actually read it, what you will see in here in your head will be at least as spectacular, amazing, and wonderful as anything you can open your eyes and open your ears and see and hear outside of you. Hmm. Interesting. That's, yeah, that's amazing. And this Thank is... Thank you. You are amazing. Like, right from your bio, just reading your bio and... Dying to read the book. It's going to be the next book I read. As you know, I'm like a nut with Eckhart Tolle and everything. So love everything you're doing. You are inspiring the world. So thank you for thank anybody you. listening today. It is Gregory C. Bu- Bua. Uh, and his book go. is Have Fun. And you can check him out at, at havefunthebook.com. Thanks Great. again, Gregory. Thanks, Gregory. That's going to be all for this edition of Get Real. Join us again next weekend for more.